guys welcome back to tech dose and in this video we will look at shortest distance after road addition queries one problem which is from lead code number 3243 let's now look at the problem statement in this problem you are given an integer n and a 2d integer array queries there are n cities numbered from 0 to n minus 1 initially there is a unidirectional road from city i to city i plus 1 for all the i's in the range of 0 to n minus 1 queries at i equals to ui vi which represents the addition of a new unidirectional road from city ui to city vi after each query you need to find the length of the shortest path from city 0 to city n minus 1 return an array answer where for each i in the range of 0 to queries length minus 1 the answer i is the length of the shortest path from city 0 to city n minus 1 after processing the first i plus 1 queries right now let's look at an example for better understanding in this case we will be taking the first example where you have n equals to 5 that means your cities will range from 0 to n minus 1 that means from 0 to 4 so initially you will get 0 1 2 3 4 okay so you will have all these nodes 0 1 2 3 and 4 now initial connection uh, will be from all the adjacent cities one after another in the order of increasing number okay and after having done that i will always be finding the shortest path from the source to destination so here the source is zero and the destination is n minus one all the time so query one that means the first query is connecting this two and four so if you connect this two and four then what will be the shortest path from zero to four in this case you will count the path with the number of hops so it takes one hop to reach from zero to one one hop to reach from one to two and another hop the third hop to reach from 2 to 4 this will be the shortest path right because if you go through 3 you will get an extra hop isn't it so 3 is the answer and that is why you will get uh, 3 as an answer after the first query now we will retain this graph and the second query says that my 0 and 2 will now be connected okay after having connected this again you have to find the shortest path from the source to destination so what will be the minimum number of hops one hop and two hop this is the minimum number of hop because if you take any other path 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 or 4 it will take more hops even if you to go from 0 to 1 to 2 to 4 directly still it is taking more hops right so the answer is 2 in this case after the third query we have to connect this 0 and 4 together right so once they are connected after that if you want to find uh, the shortest path from source to destination it is just a single hop you can just use this edge and go in just one jump right and that is why one will be appended in the answer array fine so we will be returning three to one which is representing what will be the shortest path from zero to n minus one after having processed the ith query i hope this is clear right now let's look at the constraint in this case the number of uh, cities will be less than equals to 500 but greater than equals to 3 queries dot length that means how many queries do you get will be always less than equals to 500 right the queries will always contain a pair ui comma vi where it will say that there is an h from ui to vi it also mentions that ui will always be less than vi that means all the edges are always in the forward direction that means if you try to build a graph with all the edges in the same direction you will definitely never be having any cycle and those type of graphs are called directed acyclic graph because this is a directed graph and you are not going to have any cycle so this is called directed acyclic graph right and the same point is being mentioned in the next point as well where it says that your vi ui's difference will always be greater than one okay so there will be no parallel edges here okay so we will not say that if one to two is already a path right in the beginning only without doing any query we had a path so this point maintains that there will be no parallel path among the adjacent cities okay and there are no repeated roads among the queries that means if you have a road from let's say 0 to 2 directly then another query will not come which will give you the same road from 0 to 2 there is no meaning to it it will just give you the same answer right so this has to be avoided so these are all the constraints i hope you have understood the entire problem statement as well let's now understand how to solve this problem now in our case i will be taking n equals to 5 right so if n equals to 5 is taken then we will have cities in the uh, number from 0 to 4 and let's say our queries are connect 2 and 4 then connect 1 and 3 and then connect 1 and 4 
If you want to find the shortest path, then you already know that there are two algorithms to find shortest path. One is the simple BFS and another one is Dijkstra. In this case, all the hops are of equal cost. If you take a hop from 0 to 1, it is equivalent to saying that you take a hop from 1 to 2. They both are equivalent. They will just be costing the same. So if all the costs are same, then we don't need to do Dijkstra. You can simply uh, go with the BFS technique without having to use any kind of priority queue. Okay. So in this case, we will be going with the BFS approach without using the priority queue. So let's connect this 2 and 4. First, I will be building the adjacency list out of it. If you build the adjacency list for this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, then you can use an array of pointer or a list of list initially. And you can connect all these nodes one by one. So 0 has 1 as adjacent, 1 has 2 as adjacent, 2 has 3 as adjacent, 3 has 4, and 4 do not have anybody. Now if I want to connect this 2 and 4, then you can imagine that this is how they get connected. And now 4 becomes adjacent to 2. Okay, so 2 is adjacent, node will be 4. In this particular problem, I'm making all the edges as directed because I just care about moving from 0 to n minus 1. I don't care about moving anywhere else. Right, so that's why I'm keeping everything directed here. So I have added this. After this, you have to apply your simple BFS technique and count how many hops will be taken if you start from the source node 0 and want to go to a destination node which is n minus 1. So for that to happen, you can just take a simple queue and perform level order traversal and count the number of levels to reach from 0 to 4. Simply, right? How to do that? First, your level count can be equals to 0. Now you push 0 here, okay? And then uh, this will be the starting point. Now you find the size of the queue. What is the size of the queue? This will become level number 0. So the size of the queue is 1. So at this level, at, at level number 0, I just have one node. So from here, I will be uh, processing all the nodes at this particular level. So I will be taking out this 0. So once you take out this 0, you see what are all the adjacent nodes of 0. So you can look at the adjacency list of 0 and you will see that there is only one node 1. So has it been visited? You will not want to process a visited node again. So for that reason, you can also maintain a visited array. So let's maintain that too. Okay, now we have a visited array. And this will be a boolean type, boolean type visited array. And all of them will be false. That means they have not been traversed. When I put the seed node, that means the start point, then I will make it true. Okay. After having done this, I will check if I can make uh, the call from 0 to 1. Yes, it is false. I can make that call. So this has not been visited. It will be pushed into the queue and then I will make it as true. Fine. Now all the nodes at level 0 have been done. Now I will find the size of the queue and this size will be level 1. So just one node is in the queue. So this will be level 1, right? My level will be increased by level plus plus. From this one, where I can go? I can go to 2 only. 2 is unvisited. So mark this as visited and let's uh, push 2 into the queue. 2 is pushed. Now I am done with all the nodes at level 1, right? So I'll go to the next level. Do level plus plus and find the size of the queue. The size of the queue is only 1. So we will process one time and this is level number 2 here. So from 2, I can go to 4 and 3, right? So because 2 is uh, having 3 and 4 ad adjacent. So 3 and 4 are both not traversed. That is why you can mark them both traversed and you can push 3 and 4 into the queue. Right. Now we are done with this level because all the nodes at level 2 have been processed. Now we will try to go to the next level. And so I will find the size of the queue. So this becomes level 3. So in this case, I will be processing each node one by one. So my level count becomes 3. So I'll, I'll take out this 3. Is this 3 my destination node? No, it is not. So I'll try to find out what is the adjacent node of 3, it is 4. But 4 is already marked as visited, right? So I don't need to visit it again. And there is nothing adjacent to it, so it's done. We will take out 4. Now 4 is actually the destination node. So the number of levels that you have counted will be the number of hops to reach this 4. So in one hop from 0, you reach to 1, second hop to 2, and the third hop to 4, right? So 3 is the answer in this case, right? So after this addition, 3 will be the result. Similarly, you have to maintain this and check out the next query 1 and 3 addition. So once you append this 1 and 3 together, then to the adjacency list of 1, we will be adding 3 to it. Okay. After having done this, repeat this entire process. 
and if you repeat this entire process then you will still get an answer 3 the answer will not get updated because whether you go from 0 to 1 to 3 and to 4 it will take you 3 hops or you go from 0 to 1 to 2 and 4 it will take you 3 hops right if you repeat the process still your answer will be 3 again if you append 1 comma 4 then you have appended 1 comma 4 here now in this case you can reach from 0 to 1 and 1 to 4 in just two steps so if you repeat the process you will uh, you will be popping out this 4 in level count of 2 and that is why a 2 will be appended here right so the result in this case is 3 comma 3 comma 2 i hope you have understood this entire bfs approach in this case we are performing bfs for every query there are q number of queries and for B bfs you know that uh, we need v plus e time where v are the number of vertices and e are the number of edges in this case the number of vertices is n and e will be the number of connections that means the edges so that is why you can say n plus e times of q you can also replace this e by q because in every query you are adding one non-redundant edge isn't it the space complexity here will be order of n which is for the q that we are taking after every every level we will be requiring maybe all the nodes will be adjacent after some q number of queries and uh, we are also taking the visited array of size n right so let's now look at the code if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number in this code we are given n as the number of cities and then we are given the queries so first i will build the adjacency list which is a list of list probably and i am pushing for every ith city the adjacent node will be i plus one right now this is a directed acyclic graph we will be taking the result array and we will be processing each of the query one by one okay now for every query after every query we have to find out the shortest path the present shortest path which we start from zero and go till n minus one after having updated the adjacency list according to the query right so the query at zero actually mentions where uh, is the new edge starting from and query at one actually mentions where it will end isn't it so if it is 2 comma 4 then an edge will start at 2 and go till 4 so after this adjustment is done we will be finding out the shortest path now if you look at the code of shortest path it is just a simple bfs code where we are taking the adjacency list and the n value i'll be pushing the start point which is always zero in this problem i'll be taking the visited array marked all as false by default the zeroth node is my start point so i'll mark it visited initially and the distance is basically the level counter okay so i'll be processing it until the queue is empty i'll be finding for the current level what are the number of nodes at this level to be processed and i'll be processing exactly those many nodes so this is typical level order traversal now for every node i'll be picking out i will have to check if it, this is the target node if this is the target node then the number of levels is my answer if this is not the target node then I will be processing what are the adjacent node of this node okay and I will be checking if it is already visited or not if it is not visited I will push it into the queue after having processed the entire level I will be increasing the level count by doing distance plus plus after having processed it entirely I will be returning the distance value so this is the entire code of this problem and I hope you were able to understand it if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and I will try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video see you guys in the next video thank you